Good evening, I'm Lydia Blackstone, filling in for Spencer Buckler. Coming up tonight, cases continue to spike on the USC campus where things stand. Students waited in lines for hours to get a COVID-19 test last week. How the university is adjusting. Columbia is still seeing large off-campus gatherings despite multiple warnings. What the city is doing to crack down. But first, breaking news out of Greek Village tonight, where half of the houses in Greek Village are now in quarantine. The 10 houses all have clusters of residents that have tested positive for COVID-19. A house must isolate when its members of three or more residents test positive for COVID-19. No word from the university on which houses have been impacted. The University of South Carolina now has over 1,000 active cases of COVID-19. This number is up from about 550 on Friday. Almost all cases coming from students, with the school saying the majority are coming from off-campus gatherings. The student positivity rate is almost 28% and almost three-fourths of the quarantine beds are in use. Despite the spike in case numbers, the university dashboard still has the campus alert level at low. The Interfraternity Council is moving next week's rush online in response to rising numbers. The IFC issued a statement saying they believe this move will help keep their members and the community safe. This move contrasts what we saw for sorority recruitment, where most of Rutsch was virtual, but there was an in-person bid day. Last week, students found themselves waiting in line for up to three hours to get a COVID-19 test. SGTV News Force Caden Deacons has more on how the university is trying to shorten those lines. I had to wait in the line for three hours. Rosie Edwards is one of the many University of South Carolina students who waited in long COVID-19 testing lines in the past week. As cases spiked on campus, the lines for testing have grown. Prior to this week, students could get tested at either Davis Field or 650 Lincoln, depending on the day. With the long lines come safety concerns for students. We were waiting in the sun. There was no social distancing whatsoever. We were all crammed together in a line all the way around the block. They were making you go actually into the building and only probably 15 max people could go in at a time. So all of these hundreds of people um, were waiting in line for hours. To address the long lines, the university announced over Twitter that they'd be changing the testing process. Students can now get tested every day at Davis Field from 10 a.m. to noon. The hope is that sending students to one venue and having more days available will result in shorter lines for students to wait in. For SGTV News 4, I'm Caden Dinkins. Caden, thank you. We'll see if those lines get any shorter. Even though COVID-19 numbers are on the rise, students are still having large off-campus parties. SGTV News 4 reporter Sloan O'Cone has the latest on the city is responding. Despite coronavirus cases on the U of SC campus tripling in the past week, large gatherings were seen in apartments like Palmetto Compress to crowds of students in Five Points over the weekend. Members of city council stating that groups at bars and other local businesses have been compliant with public health guidelines and therefore do not meet criteria for a citation. CBD, uh, USCPD, fire marshal and everybody have been in all those bars and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to by the letter of law. And you know what, the pictures at, at the pool at Palmetto Compress was two or three hundred people there. And, you know, that's that's where we need the landlord to step in. While the city looks to the landlords to enforce its public health policies, university officials continue to warn students about gathering in large groups, but that the responsibility to break them up lies more on Columbia officials. But the reality is when you're off campus, you're an upper class student. You think that people know what they need to do and there's some responsible you know, responsibility and holding yourselves accountable, holding your roommates accountable and doing what you need to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, the consequences would be the same and sometimes they would even be greater depending on what city, county involvement. I mean, if the police come, they issue citations. If it's a house party that um, leads to points being applied to the landlord's you know, permits, I mean, they could risk losing their ability to rent that property. In order to hold students accountable, the university stated they need the city to issue citations to student gatherings off campus. City council members state that a minimal amount have been given. I think the other weekend, the first weekend, I think there were seven reports and only one resulted in a, in a warning. 
everybody else was not, didn't fit the criteria. Although the city has yet to give more citations, students living off campus have still been warned of greater consequences for endangering the Columbia community. We really needed to get students' attention around what the consequences could be and really the health consequences for the community, which really was in preparation for the city's ordinance on house parties and, and gatherings, because we know that that's a place where and they're not thinking about face coverings, social distancing, and all those things. For SGTV News 4, I'm Sloan O'Cone. Thank you, Sloan. The university also recently announced that 15 students are on interim suspension for violating public health guidelines. Remember, the COVID-19 case numbers have been updated since that story was produced and now set at over 1,000. Stay up to date on air and online by following us at SGTV News 4 on Twitter. When we come back, how the spike in the USC campus is affecting the numbers here in South Carolina. All flags, including the one at the South Carolina State House, will be flown at half staff. Until the alumni help inform South Carolina legislators about the many ways that USC benefits Baseball business. has started off their 2020 campaign 4-0 after sweeping Holy Cross, South Carolina, at the Carolina State Fair. It is the national and international. 13 cases of infected people in the U.S., but experts here at USC say there is no reason. Tonight is doing their comedy sketches. That's another branch of SGTV. It's a big deal. It's going to be again but those showers are showing up Tuesday will be 68 Super Bowl in 50 years they took down the San Francisco 49ers 31 first Filipinos in California in October of 1587 good evening I'm Spencer Buckler coming up tonight for years, the minimum age to Tomorrow, the World Health Organization. There have been a reported 916 flu. A study from the National Academy of Medicine Tim states. Tim and staffers here at the Big Many State. members of the Carolina community. Hip Hop Wednesday is a culture phenomenon here at the University. Yesterday, the state of South Carolina reported its second highest positivity rate ever for COVID-19. Despite this, the seven day average rate of tests and ministers has not been this low since June. The data from USC is now being sent over to DHEC after a technical glitch this week. DHEC says the rise in cases in Richland County can be attributed to USC. A Columbia police officer was fired Monday night after using racial slurs last weekend. Body cam footage showed Sergeant Chad Walker calling black bar goers the N word while responding to an incident in five points. Walker was initially suspended, but the review board decided to fire him after seeing the video. Protesters gathered outside the state house on Monday calling for the move. USC football players also took a stand against police misconduct on Monday. The team led a demonstration on Green Street that included other student athletes Coach Will Muschamp said that the players wanted to show their support for racial justice and their opposition to police brutality. The Gamecocks canceled all football activities on Monday to participate in the event. In other football news, South Carolina will be kicking will found out that they will be kicking off their season under the lights against Tennessee on September 26. The Gamecocks found out their season game would start with a 7:30 and be aired on the SEC network. The team also found out the times for their three other games. South Carolina will play Florida at noon, Texas A&M at 7:30, and Auburn at either 3:30 or 4. Ticketing information has not been released yet, but the plan is for a limited number of students to be able to attend. That does it for weekly news from all of us at SGTV News 4. Stay safe out there and have a great night.